So, I'm very excited about today, chaps, um, because we've interviewed uh, a, a titan of the industry, and she, she's going to tell us all about her writing career. Yeah, it's amazing how much she's done. Um, yeah, so we spoke to Beth Chalmers, and, and we talk about all kinds of different stuff, don't we? They're about um, writing rooms and, and how to do pitches and things that go wrong, things that go right. Yeah, yeah and treatments. Yeah, treatments. Not medical treatments, we should probably no, say. No, she's not. She's we don't not go into that none of all. us are qualified for that, John. That would just be no. uh, unethical. But it is like a little bit of a peek behind the curtain, isn't it? Of, uh, yes. It is. What happens yeah, good on one. big TV shows and stuff. And seeing how you write with a partner as yes. well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's yeah. also That's very interesting. That's to great effect. Um, and um, a nickname for a famous person I wasn't aware of. Mm. Yeah. Who is Colin? There's only one way to find Please, out. Let's listen to the interview right now. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Beth. Thanks for joining Hello, us. Hello, Beth. Hello. I'm very happy to be here. It's always a bit awkward welcoming people to our podcast because we have to say, welcome to the Failing Writers <laughs> Podcast. And then that kind of... I know. ...reflects badly. It doesn't reflect badly on you at all. It's just, uh, it reflects badly on us. Yeah. And that's why we get the, people who are better the than The caveat us. is we need successful people for balance, don't we? For To keep it fair, to balance oh, us out. Dab it. Well, no, I saw it on Instagram and I thought, oh, oh, someone's followed me called failing writers and i bit yeah harsh. i did think a bit oh and then i realized yes i realized what <laughs> just it was. us um but no, i'm very glad to be here and um a bit nervous of the idea of you know the fact that you said oh i'll talk to you because you because you aren't and i'll be ricocheting between sort of self-loathing and uh Smugness. Don't worry. That was just be... literally us being polite, Beth. We, we don't hold you in any esteem whatsoever. It's just it was just uh... just to get you on, really. Just an introduction. Yeah. Oh, lovely. So Beth, Beth Chalmers <laughs> is, according to all website sources, an yeah. actor, voiceover, and writer. Um, but what what's your main thing, Beth? What's do you consider yourself an actor who also writes, or a writer who does a bit of acting? I or? consider myself a. A uh, writer who does voicing and a little bit of acting. A writer voiceover. Writer voiceover okay, actor. It's a snappy title. In that order. It would depend. It changes, doesn't it? It changes some days. That's true. So was that, was that your first dream then, was it, writing? Um, your main no. love? No, it really wasn't. No, my f oh. first dream was... <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> was acting. It doesn't mean it's not my main dream now. But uh, yeah, <laughs> my first course. dream was, was acting. And then... The voicing happened off the back of that, and then I went to university and I did a play with uh, with uh, with Olivia Coleman and uh, Amy Schindler. Oh. And Amy Schindler came up to me afterwards and said, "Do you want to do some writing?" And I thought, "All right." So, and then I thought, "This is fun." Well, I also thought this is hideous and <laughs> painful, but I, a little part of me thought it was fun. But we'll do it anyway. Yeah, and it's good to do it with someone else. So, uh, so uh, what what sort of stuff? What did you? First write with Amy. We wrote a lot of sketches. Right, right. We wrote a lot of sketches. Um, what was the very first... What became of them? We sent them off to agents, so we got an agent from that. Oh, wow. And we wrote bits and bobs. And I'm not even sure what ever got put on, but got asked to... We, God, contributed to shows. Uh, oh, Alistair McGowan mm -hmm. show. Rory Bremner. Um, I think we sent some stuff to Smack the Pony. Brilliant. Yes, of course. I uh, Griff Reece, and then we did Griff Reece Jones show. So oh, we yes. just did lots of sketches for that. And did you always work in like a partnership thing then? Was yeah, that right? I always work in a partnership. Right, right, right. Yeah, she works on her own sometimes, but um, I don't write my own name unless she's on the <laughs> Skype with me. So uh, yeah, we work uh, everything, everything together. We have one brain between us. And um, so what's that like then? Because we've we've tried the three of us have tried writing. Well, that's it. All three of us, and in various yeah. pairs over the years, with every possible success. combination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how does that work then, when you're writing with? Yeah, someone? we've known each other for twenty years, and you know we're very good mates anyway, best mates. So. So have we, but we still can't <laughs> do anything. <laughs> I think we know each other's strong points, so we kind of know who to listen to, whose voice should be stronger in each discussion. We, we mm. get really, we get sort of narky with each other sometimes. But we don't yep. fall out. 
massively. We mm. just have, we get annoyed because we're bartering over every single word. Right. In fact, weirdly, I've, I've just leapt to that and said about us falling out. When in fact, that wasn't your question. It was just, how does it work? <laughs> so I think <laughs> yeah, I just... <laughs> so, I mean, that's why we wanted to hear that, though. So when you have a fight, what's <laughs> oh, it horrible. like? Yeah. It's horrible. But usually if you do, if you do fall out over a particular joke or something, you're, the, then the guilt sits in uh, quite quickly. And the next time you have a discussion, you're much more amenable. You go, oh, no, no, that was really funny. That was very funny. <laughs> and you have to make it up. So instead of going, I'm really sorry, I think I was a bit of an asshole, you just go, oh, no, you're, that was really funny after that. So <laughs> <laughs> that's how we move on. Do you think that's harder? Do you think that's harder in comedy than with sort of serious drama? Because, like, if, if Amy says something to you and you just don't find it funny... Uh, it's quite hard to fake that. I guess, yeah, isn't it? really. It's it's that's that is the hardest thing I think. So we tend to we tend to work try and work out why we don't find it funny, because she is funny. So she's not going to pitch something that isn't funny, mm. and yeah, like myself. Yeah. So we just have to go. I think I don't buy that from this character. I think that's coming from nowhere. I mm. don't think it's left field enough. I think it's too left field. I think it's too young. I think it's you know leapt up too quickly. Or usually there's a reason. And a lot of the t- a lot of the time, you'll agree with that, won't you? When the other person says that, yeah, you kind of go, oh, you're right, yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. It sounds from what you're saying like you you're actually you're on Skype together and actually writing with each other, or are you sending stuff backwards and forwards. How does it work? No, we have final draft open, and we have the the collaboration on final draft. So we have Skype open, so we can chat. Yeah, we never look at each other. Right, and then at two o'clock in the morning, one of them will sneak <laughs> on while the other one's not looking. And delete, delete, delete. Oh, well, I have. Re- I'll get rid of that. I'll get rid of that bloody yeah. bit. Well, she's much more computer savvy than me. So if I ever stumble into the Dropbox <laughs> uh, by mistake, I got a new iPad. So I was trying to work out how the iPad would sync it up, sync it out of my Dropbox and opening things and playing with the little pen, the Apple pen, which I got very excited about. And I got a message going, are, are you are you in the Dropbox? Are you, are you playing with the Dropbox? What are you doing in the Dropbox? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I just annotated something. You're not responsible <laughs> enough yeah. to be in get the Dropbox. Out the Dropbox. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. So, Beth, what was the moment then that you thought, hold on a minute, we've we've made it here? What was the thing where you get your big break or kind of you've got a, oh, bloody hell, this is real? We, what was that moment? It sounds weird when you say your big break. Like, I'd love to say, well, the yeah. first Oscar would have done it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, uh, well, the first time we get paid for something, we, we, sold, we, sold, we sold sketches and thought that's quite fun. Then we got an agent and thought, oh, that's quite good. And yeah. then... Oh, and then we went to work on my family. Oh, okay. As as table writers, which is where we learnt, in brackets, mainly Amy learnt and told me, um, how to structure a narrative yeah. comedy. So that's mm. when we got out of doing sketches. So we were all sketches, and then it's really learning a craft, and they would throw the script down in the middle of the table, and eight table writers would be around punching it up. And by the end of yeah, it, the main yeah. script writer got most of the money. But it bore no mm. resemblance to their script by the time yeah. it finished. Yeah. So it was felt it was not like that. But um So was it was it literally like ravenous comedy wolves? <laughs> yeah. Eating yeah. a, a deer's body horrible... and spewing it back out or... <laughs> Yeah. And it was that horrible competitive it was a sort of like the room being conducted by the showrunner. Yeah. And you do, you know, and just pitching aggressively and I didn't really mm. like it. But did you, so because I imagine it's quite, it must be quite an intimidating atmosphere, but did did you see the sort of progression in the script? Did you feel like you could see it working or was it just horrible and, and also awful? Um. You don't have to be nice. You don't have to be nice. No one's listening, Beth. It's a safe so you can space. Just be honest. There's literally no one sometimes listening. You're just, you're yeah. just, sometimes you are just shuffling words around. Right, to see if it'll suddenly become funnier if you're doing a different order. I think yeah. it often got a lot better. But there's something, obviously, on Friends and Frasier, when they have the table writing, it clearly works for them. Yeah. But sometimes just one, a writer, a, a streamlining of of the same, the cohesive vision of of not too many writers getting in there. Mm. <sighs> it's better. It's always been a bit of a split mm. between the American yeah. style of writing and the UK kind of style of writing, though, isn't it? Yeah. The, 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 the team thing is the American way because it's their sitcoms are more about Filling it full of gags. Yeah. They're... Getting the gags in, getting the gags in and, and getting the laugh. But you still have, like, yeah, you're right, with the with my family, there was a high gag quotient and you had to have five per, five per page, wow. I think. Right. But it sort of means that you have to, um, the setups can't be, the laughs are never that big. Mm. Because 
you, the yeah. setups, the, setups yeah, because also the setups get interrupted with. So there's, if you have small gag, yeah. small gag, small gag, small gag, it's really hard to crescendo to a huge one. Yeah, or to tell a story. To be fair, a progress character. Or, yeah. 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 Yeah, and a story that you give a shit about. If you're really going to give a shit about the character or give a shit about the story, mm. you have to believe it a bit. Yeah. And if you are assaulting mm. the audience with cheap jokes, yeah. five a page. Uh-huh. They don't give a... Sh- they just think, oh, oh, that's funny. Oh, they're mm. sort of tittering away the whole way through it. I'm... Yeah. You've worked, you've worked as an actor in sitcoms as well. How, how did you find that? Did you ever get to, like, drop your own little line in or anything? Weirdly, as you're saying, I'm thinking, have I? <laughs> <laughs> have I? Oh, God, what have I done? You know you were in uh, some mothers do have them. <laughs> Maybe it was, was I maybe it was a different Beth Chalmers. What was I, don't I in? Know. You were Betty, weren't you? you were, oh, no, Beth. I was sorry, reading sorry. that you were in Think the Unthinkable. Oh, yeah, all the radio ones. Yes. Oh, you said the hundreds of them. Sorry. Yes. Oh, and yeah, you do. Yeah, those. <laughs> sorry. Oh, those, those ones. Those yes, of course. Those, those are the successful branches <laughs> to my varied work. Sorry, undermine the whole medium of radio. Yes. Sorry, I I'm, thought you meant. Oh, no, you, I'm really sorry. I thought you meant the BAFTA winning ones. No, right, yeah, those. Yeah, sorry, sorry, did anyone tell ones. Beth that when we invited her on here, it wasn't just to rub our faces went... in our failure? Oh, <laughs> no. So many successes, I can't even be bothered to remember. I'm sorry, them I just all. jumped to Golden Globes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I really, so, that was really shit. Yes, anyway, let's go straight to. Let's pretend I went, oh, yeah, all the eyes are fabulous. <laughs> oh, no, that's not getting edited <laughs> out, that's staying in. <laughs> Some fabulous drama. Oh, and comedy on the radio, yes. Think the unthinkable, that was great. Well, you, oh, you didn't really need to stick in your own lines that much with them. I wrote on some comedy. I wrote uh, for Concrete Cow. I We wrote mm-hmm. for Concrete Cow, which um, was on the radio. But uh, uh, not a lot of improvisation in the radio comedy was mm-hmm. necessary because those scripts are pretty tight. I mean, I work, uh, yeah, yeah. writers like Lawrence Howarth... Um, uh, who's so good? You, you don't really want to mess around with those lines, right? Do you think that is it? Um, sort of informed your work because I guess as a as an actor, you've got to work with some decent writers over the years. Do you think that sort of helped when it comes to putting your own things? Yeah, together? I mean, recognizing good writing is an important step. I imagine to doing it. Yeah. But we improvise a lot of our stuff because we're both actors, so we improvise everything. All oh, right. So if we fall over lines twice then we know that it's the horrible line for an actor to say and therefore when yeah be sold. Mm. and if we're trying to this isn't quite the answer to the question but i'm just going to go ahead anyway um <laughs> we uh, if we can't get something done if we say he's got to rev- she's annoyed with him because of that he knows that and, and he's got to rev- get that information out of her and we'll just improvise it until something unlocks yeah. until we find out a way that it could happen yeah. and then we'll hone it and write it we very much write for actors. We don't really write, yeah, we're very much, it's mm. all about the actors and it has to feel, yeah, we're very keen on our dialogue being right for each character and mm. all that. I think. Sure. What's, your, what's your best tip uh, for writing comedy? Don't do it on your own. Do, do it with a friend. <laughs> if you had to give somebody, <laughs> a, a, an aspiring writer, uh, your like key no, tip, don't forget it. this. I think, just don't, uh, well, you can tell when a joke's been written. It's making sure that ah, oh, that's so obvious. That I've been mm. don't overwrite it. Don't oh, oh, I know what. Don't set up and knock down your own joke. In a re- your setup to your joke's really important. Oh God, everything I'm sounding makes me sound really <laughs> annoying because I'm sort of half inventing. So it sounds quite smug and like I'll tell you when people say, oh, the most important thing of writing is sandwiches. Uh, you know, that kind of crap. So I'm just thinking. <laughs> Um, no, I like that line because I like sandwiches. So yeah, <laughs> so, we, we had an, we had a we had a director at drama school who said at one point um, uh, in technical rehearsals it's very important to uh, eat sandwiches because actors love sandwiches. Which is like, you <laughs> idiots, because <laughs> you were that kind of crap. <laughs> thought, There's some truth in that, yeah. though, isn't there? He likes yeah. sandwiches. He must be a great actor. You can tell a lot about a person by what sandwich they like. <laughs> He's been into baguette man. Sa- sandwichology yeah. is is a is a burgeoning scientific. Uh, yeah. Of course, Gilgood was always more fond of the wrap. I mean, John, John likes an open baguette. <laughs> mm. If it's not on an open baguette, it's true. John's not that very interested. uncomfortable around an open sandwich. Whereas Dave likes cheap supermarket <laughs> white bread, plenty of butter, and some digestive biscuits. Oh. Yeah. They don't even have to be together. I'll just <laughs> get some bread and some things and put them in your mouth. Just the throw time. the ingredients on the table and see what he does. <laughs> exactly. 
like a like a trough. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a favourite writing snack, Beth? A snack that induces the perfect mindset. For I have creativity? to now write far away from my kitchen cupboard <laughs> because I. I'm, I'm learning this. Yeah. I can't. It's just procrastination, boredom, thinking that maybe I can't think of anything funny. Maybe a sandwich. Maybe maybe a biscuit would help. Um. Uh, a change of scenery. <laughs> What's in the fridge? Yeah, just boiling the kettle every half an hour. Just the, you know, ruin the environment. Just keep boiling that kettle because somehow it'll make yes. things easier. So, what, what is your your process then? How do you how do you get in the get in the zone? I get in the zone. It's all every answer seems to be the same. Every, I get in the zone because I have a <laughs> writing partner who. Um, well, when I started, when I started. Um, a couple of other people asked me to, to write with them. <laughs> Stop. And uh, they would just, we'd sort of turn up and we'd write a, a sketch and then we'd order some wine and then we'd have a laugh and then we'd go yeah. home and nothing would happen. And then Amy said, will you write with me? And I um, I thought, yeah, great. She's great fun. We'll have a laugh. And, you know, she she turned up with ideas and uh, I think even a computer in those days. I, I hadn't even <laughs> brought a pencil. I just, was. And she was the most driven person I've ever. Well, they're good people to work with. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, oh, and so we and we work, mm. we work hard. But weirdly, what she really hates now is that it's rubbed <laughs> off on me. And now I sometimes, so she can't if she wants to slack a bit. I, I'm. She's thinking, when did this? When did this happen? <laughs> That's good. Um, so yeah, the reason my regime is simply we nine thirty every morning. Uh, the Skype goes that the horrible ring of doom that Skype mm, yeah. does at nine thirty in the morning, and every morning, and whether we've got a project or not, we we're on it, and we're just and we create and create and create like more projects. So we just we just keep throwing it out there until what like quarter past ten. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, stop boiling. No, how long is that? Is that a day? That's right up to five o'clock, or we can write uh, about about five thirty six. Wow. And we'll have like twenty minute lunches sometimes wow. if we if we're on a roll. Um, we 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 don't we, yeah we work a bit. I think quite, we're starting to see a pattern now that if you want to be a writer, <laughs> you actually have got to spend quite a lot of time writing. Work, work and working hard, <laughs> but that seems yeah. to that like that. What a great help that would be. I guess if one of you's not quite feeling it on a particular day, <gasps> if the other one's mm. saying, "Come on, go on, Hugely. start writing." Oh, um, it makes that must such be a, great help. a difference. Mm. Well, that's kind of why we started this podcast, isn't it? So, you know, true. you couldn't just hide away from yes, it. Yes, that's true. The, uh, have you been writing question would come up. I mean, we haven't been so. on Skype calls at half past nine every morning, <laughs> but, you know, there's little baby steps, yeah. isn't it? But have you written with each other? We did a long time ago. Um, How did you do that? Do you sit, sit in the same room? Um, what we generally did was was get about halfway through something and then stop getting exactly. distracted. Well, no, but yeah, that's the thing. We used to do it in a distance mm. way of like we'd sort of talk about something and then we'd go each go off and write some bits and then bring them back together. And how did you feel um, when if you edited each other's work? Did you? I wouldn't dare oh. edit anything of Tommy's. I think my stuff was all pretty good, so I didn't really need <laughs> didn't really need any <laughs> editing. <laughs> I've identified. Yeah, it sounds like a healthy, there, productive <laughs> way to work. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't touch it. We just, it just always ran out of yeah. steam, didn't it? Everything, everything. Mm. Yeah, it just drifted off because we weren't, yeah. because we weren't yeah. ringing each other every day, and being <laughs> because we weren't hardworking professionals. Uh, somehow it, it, it failed. And here we are. <laughs> but it makes a difference. Uh, it, you know, a lot of our, our whip quacking is because we've, we've got deadlines because we're you know doing shows with deadlines. At the yes. Moment. And like you said before, mm. deadlines do a lot for you. They do, they but do. sometimes it's the in-between times where we have to keep creating. You know, keep you to keep throwing stuff out there, and yes, you throw loads of shit at the fan or something like that, and most of it's for nothing. Yeah, and it does feel like a massive, massive waste of time. And you think, oh, we've we've got mm. we've got so many projects out there, and but usually one of them will inform the other one, and we are kind of aware that we have to create about ten projects to every one that will go somewhere. But we sell mm. a lot of treatments, and we sell a lot of pilot scripts and right so we keep enough of that turning over i su- yeah i suppose does that mean uh like do you have to have that sort of mindset of like okay our job is just coming up with ideas and writing our job isn't specifically to sell this script or to get this idea going we just you know is that how you have to look at it every day like our job is just to come into the office which is you know whatever and just write some stuff every day if we're starting fresh if we like we've let's say we you know we finished mystic the one we're doing at the moment and we've got nothing out there then we will 
just kind of gauge what's going on. Because if you try and write too much, like you said, to a channel or to a brief, then you kill all the creativity and it's not something you should be writing anyway. Yeah. But mm. we sort of work out within the zeitgeist within what's going on at the moment and within the kind of stuff that's being made what suits us and what we like and then we look at all the projects we've already mm. got out there i mean the stuff that we've made that's in a drawer and and the things that we there are things we can't let go of characters we love relationships we love and we and we will keep trying to find the right incarnation for them i think yeah so we and then we sort of do that um shake that down and then we we might write a treatment and then go and sell it so we can get some money to write the script but actually we write scripts quite quickly so we tend to then we'll write an outline and then we'll write a scene by scene breakdown and then we'll just write that script so yeah mm. and then we can take that around because the script it stops all the silly questions when you when you try and send um when you try and sell mm -hmm. it because the treatment oh the micromanaging and the changing around of it on the <laughs> treatment is just painful and you think well no because the whole point is that he's you know blind or something <laughs> so give us a snapshot of what what level of detail will be included in a, in a treatment then that you put together? Treatment, we were, I think for us, a, bit, a couple of pages and it will, for America, it would always start with, oh God, for America, they're always full of um, <laughs> why you're the one who should write it, which is really, okay. really limiting because it makes you, you have, I think I'm going to have to get myself, I'm going to have to do a stint in prison because I've got nothing <laughs> Nothing unusual to say. I have to get arrested. I have to... So where where does that come from then? Is that a like protecting? Well, no, they just that authorial voice is because uh, the, mm. they. I don't know. They, they but they buy it more. It's like they. If you say right. I, I lived on a bench for twelve years, and it's a, a comedy about the people I met on that bench. They would probably go, "Oh my god, it's amazing! You must have had so." Right. Because so okay. they also go, yeah. "Well, then you get the detail. The detail is what makes it brilliant. And if you lived it, you got the detail." Yeah. And they'll believe it more, I think. Mm. Um, right. So we'd always start with that by saying, you know, um, you know, we mine our own lives, twist it, exaggerate it, try and... Yes. Um, yeah. Having lived as a horse for the last three exactly. years, we thought you we might have found <laughs> <You mistake. might laughs> <stop> Yes. <laughs> it is really difficult. It's, oh, God, I met someone, that, let's just say, and the amount of different sisters that I've had my poor sister, if she ever read half, if she ever read half the treatments, <laughs> if she ever read half the treatments, she'd think, God, <laughs> awful. Uh, yeah, and what Amy, you know, has apparently been through in her life is just horrendous. So uh, it's These poor women, we <laughs> must give them the exactly. job. How can they go on? <laughs> Ricocheting from disaster to disaster. How is she um, typing this with no arms? It's amazing. <laughs> exactly. And she lived for three years as a horse on a bench, <laughs> for God's sake. I mean, over here, I don't think they mind too much, so I think the treatment would very much it would be a log line the kind of the elevator pitch is quite important i mean we wrote mm, yeah. we wrote a thing um years ago called um pauline peeps dowry and it was very much bridget jones in the 17th century and yes whatever happens, you go oh i can a i can picture that and b i can picture where the jokes are mm. and it's yes. and it does it for you but as soon as you start going well, it's about two people, but they're they're on a they're on a road trip. But he he's he's uh, a venue out because yeah, there's yeah. some yeah, yeah. there's a real problem there. So um, do you ever start with the logline as a starting well, point? Well, I think we tend to start with our characters. Actually, yeah. that doesn't make sense, does it? What a weird thing to say. I, no, I think yeah, we do tend to start with the characters, the, the characters, the relationships, and then yeah, because but what they but want. But their journey and, has to be yeah. quite unusual. You're only going to sell it if. It's finding that nub. It's finding the thing that makes it different. Mm. Finding the thing that mm. A makes it different, and B you can see where the comedy comes from. Yeah, different but the same. Yeah, yeah. different but the same. But they can always, but a bit like The Office for years, and now a bit like Catastrophe, or a bit like Fleabag, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, I oh. when you were saying, what would I say to anyone writing comedy? No, I haven't come up with anything. Ignore me. Um, <laughs> we'll come back, back to that later on. <laughs> so going back to that. Uh, Pauline Peep story. That was the one with. Did that have David Mitchell? Yeah, we had amazing. We had Olivia Coleman. We had yeah. David Mitchell. We had Sharon Horgan, Rebecca Staten, Tom Hollander. Yeah. So what was that like wow. then, working with, with big names? Uh, did that add well, an weirdly, extra level of well, pressure I, to you? I'd done plays in Edinburgh and known Collie for a long time. Uh, right. Olivia Coleman. And I'd done Footlights with David Mitchell and toured with him for. Um, the six month the footlights tour yeah and tom hollander had just finished doing a jane austen radio with so i didn't and rebecca state and i do a cartoon with right, in galway okay. 
So I did a cartoon with her. The, so the only one I didn't know was um, oh Catherine Parkinson, who I who I had worked with as well on something. So yeah, the only one I hadn't worked with was Sharon Horgan. Right. So it didn't feel that worrying, and I just trusted that. I just you just knew what they. The brilliant thing is, is you know, they know what they're doing. Yeah. And oh, yeah. like Tom Hollander, mm. he just brought uh, Olivia Colman brought everything that we wanted her to bring and knew she could, and same with David Mitchell, and Tom Hollander just. He just adds, he adds just glory. He adds glory to a script. Yeah, yeah. And he, oh, he's just wonderful. I would stick him in ev- ev- everything. Did you just, did you just call Olivia Colman Collie? Did the, uh, so, I uh, yeah, I did. I did call her Collie. Right. That's, how... well, that's, that's, yeah. that's the level of intimacy we're looking for uh, in this. <laughs> well, we were at university together and we did loads of, you know, we did uh, lots of plays and... Cool. So, yeah. What... Uh... What is the sitcom oh. that you wish you'd written? Best? Is there any that you see and you get really yeah. jealous? Yeah, I mean, I really in, I'm enjoying Motherland quite a lot. I find that quite a high gag question. I mean, flea, mm. it sounds so, so boring to say Fleabag. Yeah. I feel boring saying Fleabag, but it's. Well, but I like the fact it's different. Though, it's it's it? just yeah. it was new. It was different. It was yeah, it's very. Good. But also, the minute I say these things, I mm. then go, "Oh my god, that that the thing that I love most in, in the world." There was like, <laughs> you know, Modern Family. There you go, Modern Family. I mean, Modern Family is just it just the yeah. speed of those jokes okay. and all those jokes are so it's embedded joyful. in character. I was just gonna say yeah. this. It's it's so balanced, isn't it? Everything's just on the perfect yeah. balance. Yeah, it does have everything and. All the characters are great. I mean, because everybody can say a different favourite mm. character. I think there's a real skill, isn't there, as well, in terms mm. of characters. Um, on Modern Family is a great example of how you can have characters that are potentially two-dimensional yeah. because they're so kind of in a little stereotype, but somehow they're, they've got yeah. so much depth, but they're still in this two-dimensional... You, you know yeah. exactly where you are. And especially with an ensemble writing. like that, you haven't got much time to service all those characters. And they're quite short episodes. But yeah. they, mm. every single character has their little, I hate the word journey, but they have their own little journey and story in there. And all those intersect yeah. beautifully. Yeah. The structure of Modern Family and the characters of Modern Family. Yeah, I'm going to say Modern Family. It's it's absolutely You're sticking brilliant. Sticking with Modern Family. I'm sticking with Modern Family. <laughs> Final answer, Modern Family. <laughs> right, um, we'll, lock, we'll lock that in. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it is. It is fantastically, brilliantly done. Mm. And what's what have you written that you're most proud of? What are there any like particular moments, or or <laughs> or just like the whole of a you know the whole well, of an I episode like or the whole of a series? Just, even we just get what? better and better and better because every single thing you write, even if it's something that doesn't gone anywhere, mm. makes you better for the next thing. So it sounds so you know what we're writing this morning, what we're writing yesterday at the moment. This mm. series, Mystic, for BBC, uh, is uh, oh yeah. So is this the second it's series? Series that you're two writing? and three. Mm. So that's what we're doing. Is we are two and three, right? Wow. We're cu- we're doing the final pre prep because we start filming next week in New Zealand. Nice. And wow. So we've got you just in time. Writing series three yes. at the same time. Well, yes. In fact, this morning I was writing bits on series two after we've had the first read through out in New Zealand, and then. This afternoon I'll be moving ahead a bit with series three, so it's getting your head getting your head in those stories is difficult. Right, and you are sort of going, oh, yeah. hang on, are they even together now? <laughs> Did they get together? Did he? So he hasn't asked her. <laughs> oh God! I feel slightly panicky just thinking about that. Let alone oh, it being really in the is. Writing. Yeah. yeah. There was one point where we were editing the cuts of series one, and we were writing series two, and we were story breaking series three. Oh, dear, oh. And every single morning <laughs> it was about ten minutes of. Well, the first hour of each day was going. Wait, hang on. What is what? I so, can't see. Uh, I, uh, and, I the stress uh, of trying to make toast and boil an egg and get a cup of tea going at the same time. <laughs> I can't imagine that, that that sort of level of stress of having three series of oh. something or running around your head at the same time. It is. It's painful. But we have a producer, Jen, who uh, it's amazing. She's always in another room on Zoom, so she sets up a Zoom call in the morning. So it's a mid- like she's next door. Yeah. And we have a WhatsApp and we go, Jen, you there? And she goes, yep. And you just click the link and she lets you in and uh, and you can say to her, so in the visions in series two, is there, does she, does she see, does she see in the rubbish bin or, or does he, <laughs> uh, do we see the corner of the rubbish bin or just the whole rubbish bin? <laughs> and uh, don't worry, it's not that dull. And um, no, I'm all, uh, all in for the bin <laughs> drama. That's what 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's about waste it's management. Like, I mean, people, yeah. people will be talking yeah. about the bin episode for years to come. But when you're I mean, talking really about uh, a... you know, bin waste management, <laughs> just uh, you didn't think that was going to be a segue into anything. No. But, it, it, it is the, but the, why, the other thing about inner treatment is why now? So why why are you the best person to write this thing? And the other one is why now? Mm. And and the whole climate change and all yeah. that is um yeah is a pretty hot is a Oof. hot topic right now. When did the first uh, series of Mystic air? Was that back the beginning of this year? Yeah, is that right? Yeah, I think it, it was. Uh, what year are we in? No, hang on. <laughs> No, last year. Was it for like <laughs> pre-pandemic? <laughs> last year. I, well, I've lost last year. I've, we've all lost yeah. a year, haven't we? Yeah, it did just disappear. Yeah, last year. Yeah. No one knows where oh, it is God. still. But we only filmed, we filmed up to series eight, up to uh, up to episode eight of the first series. Hmm. During the pandemic? No, yes. No, no. And, and then we stopped. Three episodes short. Three, oh. uh, three scenes short. <laughs> <laughs> three. This is an insight into how it's I work. It's just like boiling uh, that egg all over again, isn't it? <laughs> eggs all over the floor <laughs> right now um three scenes short of the first eight episodes they uh, and they shut yep. down filming oh. so we have got, we've yeah. got one episode wow. in the first eight epi- one <laughs> one episode in that first eight where there's quite a lot of words on the back of people's heads there's a lot of kids <laughs> riding a lot of, a lot of with ADR to get the story out oh, right. so they're all riding through the woods <laughs> shouting um <laughs> But they were, thank goodness, so we could get the first eight episodes out. And then when lockdown lifted in New Zealand, yeah. they uh, they yeah. filmed the last five. And so the whole first series is out now. Yes. Okay. Well, because I, 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 I was watching Simone yesterday. Um, and oh, did I it. see that it, it's an adaptation? Was it, did it, is it adapted from a book originally? Loosely based. So how did, how did um, that come about then? Uh, there's some books called Pony Club Secrets written by Stacey Gregg in New Zealand. Yep. And Liberty, in the production company in New Zealand, came over to Slim Productions in London and said, we think we could make this as a co-pro. Find us some writers. Right, so okay. they came and found us. Right. Um, and we pitched for it. They, they said, read these books and then come in and pitch for the job. So we, we told them what we'd do with it and what we liked about it and, and what we would not mm. do. And they said, great. So we wrote a pilot episode and then the BBC said they were interested and then the bbc said they wanted oh hang on i think i'm conflating that with another story <laughs> with that <laughs> we did a, we, we did an itv itv comedy where where we wrote one and they said no we love it we love it, we love it can you write another one and then we'll be sure <laughs> but i think with pony i think with mystic we just wrote the one and a massive bible a massive bible that was 30 pages of story ideas and where it came from and uh, mm. and um characters and yeah. stuff i think Maybe it wasn't that long. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that had a huge Bible that went with it. So the BBC. And were you, were you actively pitching against other writers, or were you? Yeah, yeah. I think sort of the first people to come to the table. Yeah, when you say actively, I mean we went in the room together, just <laughs> shouting, uh, shouting at the down over their shoulders. <laughs> Proper pitch off situation. <laughs> what a it's horse. a TV program in itself. Hang on, they've they've put a, they've put yeah. a horse in this. We we're going to have to start this all over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was, yeah, oh, yeah. So I think we were we were um, pitching. With, I think there were other writers they were interviewing. Um, but that is the other thing is you have to sort of work out what they are wanting you to say because it's so easy to go in there and say, okay, we'd like something slightly different with this, and you can scare the shit out of them. Yeah, and, and it'll be <laughs> awful. So what you have to do is you have to say, we love the books. We love this, uh, and we will. We want to enhance this and uh, and and show this and enthusiasm. Yeah. And then when you're doing it, you say okay. Because also when you when you've got the job, then they say, just go crazy, think big. You know, <laughs> don't worry about the constraints. Just what would you do in an ideal world? And that's when you say, well, I'd lose the ghost horse <laughs> because that's quite a tricky thing to keep going. <laughs> and they go, and they go, yeah, yeah, great, great, great. And you go down that road for ages, and then. Somebody says, "Hang, this is ridiculous." That's the main yeah, thing of the is, book. It's, it's, it's about a ghost story. horse. Yeah, can we? Yeah, can we? Can we wind back on that? So uh, yeah, do whatever you yeah, want, you're, but you're not that. Teased. Not that. Don't do that. But, but, yeah. yeah, and at, at the beginning of every series, you're teased with this. Um, I mean, you know, just think big, and then they say at the end, "Oh, but we can only have one bulldozer." <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. So the biosphere? That's not. We're not going to buy. No. Okay. Fine. A green a greenhouse is good. Yeah, good. Um, 
Yeah, there's, there's a lot of that going on. But fair enough, you know, budgets are budgets. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yes. And was it was it fun to write, Mr. Oh, it's, it's more fun to write every... as it goes on. Because you get to know the characters. I feel right. like yeah. I love our characters. I love our characters. And now I know them. I know the kids. And I say kids, they're mm. sort of 18. But um, I love them. And I know what they can do. And we can write for them. And I will miss them hugely when we stop. Yeah. I like, yes, I feel like, and, and mm. the trouble is, again, with that, an ensemble cast, because we've got adults in it and kids in it. And we want to use them all. We want to, and you just, because it has to be driven by the kids. But our mm. adult characters are also fantastic. And we just, yeah, we want to use everybody. And every time we see send a script, someone goes, oh, but we miss them. You think, well, so do we, but where are they going to go in 30 pages? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we haven't got time. So, yeah, it's a real shame, actually. You just want to write more and more and more. But I would mm. say, yeah, the the best thing and the most fun thing I'm writing is right now. Wow. That's Great. a good answer, isn't it? I mean, it's, yeah, it's, that's only, it's only me with that opinion. <laughs> 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 well, what that's no, but that's that's a lovely thing. It'd be terrible if it was something you wrote fifteen uh, years ago. My heyday. <laughs> it's just a, a gentle slide down. In... <laughs> Talking of that, is there anything that you did uh, yeah. in your sort of prolific output? Is there anything that you sort of pitched that you thought was absolutely just the best thing ever, um, uh, and it just never got anywhere, never got picked up? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things that I think we pitch that are good and then you see them and it's not because they've been stolen, it's because the, the ideas tend to be quite ubiquitous anyway. Yeah. So, and you see them a bit later in different incarnations. We wrote something called Refuge, which was, have you seen Home? There's a thing called uh, Home out there, a sitcom. Mm, mm. Uh, Rufus Jones wrote it. Okay. And we pitched mm. it. It was. It's about uh, immigrants coming over from Afghanistan or asylum seekers and asylum seekers coming over from Afghanistan when they were all Anyway, it was a very similar mm, right. thing. And mm. and our agent was nervous of it because it was it was before all that. Right. So we were a year before Ahead home. of your time, yeah, see. I, I, we were just, honestly, are victims mm. of our own pre prescience, <laughs> yeah. is that right? Um, uh, yeah, and I think that was quite nerve-wracking. Also, sometimes you just think, I'm not the right person to write this. I don't think I've got the mm. right to be writing this. That's not an ideal first line for you three. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's about disadvantaged young children. And uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's called hard times. Um, yeah, we have to write a bit of what we know. But yeah. you run out of what you know. Mm. If, you, if you're me, you run out of what you know quite quickly. Um, Exactly. You've got your sister, and, though, sorry. and she's just riddled with disaster. When my sister was yeah, a Syrian exactly. refugee, <laughs> she came over in the boot of a car. <laughs> Said fourteen children, first woman to have flown a rocket. So that's so that's the sort of um, in the past. What's what's next then, Beth? Obviously, you've still got quite a bit of mystic going on, but um, what's is there a big plan for the future? Well, in, in a way that makes me sound like I'm being terribly, like I'm very important, like, well, I can't say. But um, <laughs> oh. we, 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 there, there might be a sort of uh, a, dra you know, a drama coming up, probably a true, uh, something based on a true story that will be when Mystic is, uh, well, hopefully more yes. and more Mystic, yes. to be honest. But then also we, we, we need to, the more, we, more Mystic, um, at the moment we're doing two series in yep. one year. So the idea would, mm. would would be to get another series of Mystic, but just be doing one series in a year, and therefore have other projects going yeah. at the same time. Mm. And you've got to bang them out while the kids are young as well, haven't you? Yeah, not you know not I mean? John's not John's up. kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> not really, you have to take that, that, that into account when really you're really writing your um, stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> not my kids. No, not kids no. or children. <laughs> No, you are. Yeah, you are right. Oh, you're, yeah. It's the thing you've also got to think about the next incarnation of the cast. So we'd like that to carry on forever and and yeah. uh, and see if we can keep regenerating, like Grey's Anatomy. You know, oh, I see. Yeah, like bringing in new and, um, characters. Uh, yeah, of course. So yeah, but also then keep our adult stuff going because the adult comedy. It, there is something oh, right writing <laughs> the kids stuff is difficult. Only so many times you can just say, "Oh, you idiot." And you just think, uh, uh, we, we, miss, we, we miss the whole <laughs> section of being able to put people in a car in a hurry without a seatbelt. 
Uh, we miss saying they're having a glass of wine. The amount of times you you yeah. you want to have to have no. someone just they've had a couple of glasses yeah. of wine, Too so much they say anything they wouldn't have said. We can't have that. You can't have that. And we've got um yeah uh, the New Zealand writers. Yeah, but the New Zealand writers are, are shocked by it all. I understand that because they haven't written you know <laughs> for, with CBBC before, <laughs> and so <laughs> at one point we had one of the adults <laughs> calling one of the kids a wanker. <laughs> And, uh, Hold on and, a moment. and then one of the kids went out and had a fag. This is going out we in went, Britain. Oh, oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is so, on the BBC. Go, yes, he is 16, but it's, no, you can't do that. People in different countries don't seem to understand the word wanker. <laughs> yeah. I've noticed that. And they seem to think it's like just calling someone mm. a prat yeah. or a silly yeah, sausage. Yeah, they say, oh, but we call everyone a wanker over here. I was watching something mm-hmm. on YouTube the other day. It was um, some American guy coming to London to try the food. I was watching it with the kids. And then he's just doing the whole thing. And then at the end goes, so let's have a see what you're doing, you wankers. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no one's like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, just don't seem to understand <laughs> yeah. the word wanker. I think bugger as well, especially in Australia and New Zealand. They say, ah, you bugger, ah, bugger, ah, all the time. And it's involuntary. So we have <laughs> to go through at the end. We have to edit it out all the time and have to... ADR all the lines where they've just stuck the word bugger in. Oh, God. Stop it. I like to think there's just an entire day devoted to this. It's just bugger day. (laughs) What day is it? Oh, it's not bugger day, is it? Oh. Oh, Wankers. (laughs) There was a word they used to use in Neighbours all the time. Drongo. uh, When they couldn't swear or anything. Dag. Dag. Oh, you're such a dag. (laughs) You're flaming galah. You're galah. You're a dag. Yeah, it's weird when these memories come back. The other day I remembered Lassiter's. Lassiter's. We were trying, we were trying to redesign our coffee shop. And we were just wow. don't make it look like Lassiter's. Yeah. <laughs> it's difficult, yeah, the language. I just think I... I... And we love writing adult drama, but to be honest, when we write kids stuff, we, we write exactly what we would write for adults, just without... with the, with the safety yes. compliance hmm. in it. I mean, which is... Uh, but it means that sometimes the, 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 it can feel a bit laborious and a bit laboured because... You have to yeah. do best practice. I know it's a good thing, but you have to say, mm. shouldn't we t- shouldn't we look for an adult first before you yeah. go and do something? Yeah, because you have to show the kids a- and anything that's imitable, imitatable. I want to say, imi- you know, that kids can imitate in the playground. Yeah, You're really yeah. careful about that. Because I did mm. see Beth that you uh, wrote at one point. For, you did some horrible histories, or you did at least one horrible history. Yeah. <gasps> what yeah. A dream what job was that, that was. like? You spend it's a whole day. Oh, you turn a whole day with the other writers mm. and you sit in a room and Greg comes along and says, does a um, a lesson with you. We did Churchill, Boudicca and yep. Napoleon. Whole day, whole day, he just teaches you all the funny, quirky, weird things that happened around the time of Napoleon internationally, nationally, the wow. quirks of him, his life. Is what... It's <laughs> brilliant. And then you go away and you, while you're in there, you sort of pitch yeah. sketches things that might be quite good around this stuff but it's it's fed to you quite well because the the information mm. he's giving you is so yeah. sketch ready um or just sketch specific and um so you can find your angle quite well and mm. then you pitch it and then at the end he says you go away and you write mm. five or six sketches in that area it's a sort of loosely discussed because so that you don't all go around yeah. and wrote, write the same stuff um the songs are protected the songs are just written by this guy dave so uh, mm. we leave yeah. it to him it's like us with John ditties. and his silly, stupid <laughs> little ditties, ditties isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, Get off my ditties. Uh, and yeah, we, we sent them in, and and it was cool. It was a it was a fantastic thing to do. It was just loads of fun. Yeah, I bet. It was loads of fun. I'm, I'm proud to have been part of it because it's a great series. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So Beth, bef- before we let you go, do you have one oh. top tip? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> okay. It's not the top tip, and it won't be the best one. I have a top. Do you have a I have a sort of, of like tip. we're talking. It's in the top quarter or percent. Anyway, let's say. And I think if you can't, <laughs> good, good. if you can't pitch it in two sentences, then you don't have a strong enough engine or conflict mm, at yeah. the top. A, a, a engine or conflict. So you need to know what it's about, where the joke is going to come from. And so somebody wants to do this and they can't do it yeah. because of that. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So So if you can't pitch it in two sentences and make someone go, Ooh, Yeah. Right, yeah. I see how that's gonna... uh, then it's gonna be hazy and lost and hang on, what do they want? Mm. It, uh, the, the engine needs to yeah, be yeah. so clear. Yeah. What do they want and yeah. why can't yeah. they get yeah. it? Yeah, that's 
That's that's a good tip. That is a good one. Yeah. I was reading that book that I mentioned before about playwriting. I think it was I think it was Alan Bennett who he used to get so far through a play and then once he'd worked out what it was about, he'd write the sentence that said this play is about blah and then he'd stick that to his typewriter. Um so that like as he was writing, everything that he wrote had to fit with that sentence of yeah, what the so thing was about. Off, and that was wonder off topic. And because mm. we've got a thing which now has eight episodes in the series, we have a clear theme, I suppose, for all the episodes. So it's not a story arc. Mm. It's not to do with the story arc. It's not to do yeah. with you know, what the characters want and why can't they get it. It's um, to, to to keep it cohesive because we've got other writers involved because it's a co-pro. You've got to have writers. And so um, no, you've got to. We're lucky to have writers from New Zealand. So, um, uh, sorry, that sounded awful. So we've got to have writers from New Zealand. Also, to, yeah. it's very important that we do for many reasons. Um, I mean, they are, they're wonderful and everything, <laughs> and we have to have them. <laughs> yeah. I wish they'd stop they changing my words. <laughs> <laughs> We're so lucky to have these talents forced upon us. Um, but we do have a sort of, to keep it slightly, to keep it cohesive, there's that overall thing of where the kids are in their life. And so we do have that. We keep, we keep having to go back to that. Oh, I'm really sorry. That's her Skyping me. Oh, hang on. Let me just, I'm going to, that's my, that's my, um, my, my writing session uh, being, calling me. I'll just call her and say, <laughs> I'm really sorry. You see how hard we work? Oh, no. But this, this is I'm so perfect, sorry. isn't it? I, I'm just going to say, uh, 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 sorry, um, still. <laughs> This is great. This is so successful that the interview is being interrupted by her by work. writing schedule. Yeah, that's I know. the calibre this... of guest we want on this podcast. <laughs> it's just my mum, but I'm pretending. <laughs> yeah. uh, can, you pretend you, it's co- it? can you say it's Collie? Can you just say oh, Collie's on the phone? I say, oh, Collie, go away. <laughs> no, I will not write you something. No, you cannot be in the thing I'm writing. No, stop it. Um, sorry. Also, I'm quite a... Um, a messy-headed person, a messy talker. Oh God, you see, that's which is why I like writing <laughs> things down because, because, because when you write things down, you can you can go Bleh! and just just all the stuff you want mm. to say, and then you think, oh, hang on, the order I should have expressed this is this, <laughs> then this, then this. That are yeah, lovely. That's better. Yeah. And I I don't have that. I get overexcited and over enthusiastic, so I've probably been quite messy and confusing. I listened to Zadie Smith the other day on something, and she's she takes a massive. You ask her a question, and she takes a huge pause. And I think, oh, she's very clever because she's very thoughtful. But it turns out that what she's actually saying after the thoughtful pause is really clever and thoughtful. So I, I, it's not just the so, so just the pauses don't work. Yeah, you've got to have both sides of that, haven't you? Because if you leave yeah. a long pause and then say something really stupid, it just amplifies how it stupid really, it is. Yeah, what you've done is you've made everyone lean in. You've gone, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's that's where I've fallen down over the years in my the political career. The great thing career. is in a podcast, you can edit those out. I just, yeah. Please, yeah, that's true. Please, yeah. well, like I said, please help me out with that. <laughs> Tom's really good, actually. He does make people sound quite clever. So there's only so much I can do, though, guys. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a miracle worker. Yeah. Just uh, one other thing. Do you, so you're talking about sort of getting stuff out and onto the page. Do you tend to do that with the first draft of stuff? Do you just, like the, the pair of you, do you just go, right, we're not going to argue with each other too much, just get the main blomp and then we can edit it later? Or are you quite specific about... Yes, yes. Yes, that's really, yes, that. Because uh, it, it speeds everything up so much. The first draft, if you over, over refine yeah. everything you write mm. in that first draft, most of that yeah. will go. And you think, oh, is it mm. hours? So you just, you pretty much go story, vague, uh, placeholder, joke area, coming in, going out, subjects that are covered. Uh, so you've done that in the scene by scene, but then you sort of do it in the script form, but you don't, yeah. I would say we we don't worry about it that much at all. Um, and then sometimes we'll, mm. we'll, we'll have a little bit of a uh, discussion about a, a joke and then we have to remind ourselves, hey, it's first yeah. draft, it's first draft. And then, mm. and, then, and then you're at least honing the areas that are going to stay because the amount of time we have wasted just writing and rewriting an opening scene and then st- in the end you start on page 13 yeah. anyway. Because yeah. oh. I think that is something that we've so talked about yeah. a lot with this. It's just... Like just the importance of getting to the end of something, and then you've got something to work with, rather than overthinking and overanalyzing. It's the most debilitating thing in the yeah. world to overanalyze when you're just starting. Just, just, I was reading this interview. I can't remember the guy's name now, but he's of like a one of the uh, big writers from the early seasons of The Simpsons, 
And he's very well known, oh, yeah. very well respected, and I can't remember his name. But he was saying that his process would be just to write any old rubbish. So he would literally write, Homer says, can I have one of those? Marge says, one of what? And then he'd move on. Uh, and like, you know, just get the bare bones down onto the page. It didn't matter if there was any jokes in it or not. Just so that the next day you could go back and you've got something to work yeah. from. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That really does, I think. Beth, how long will you spend Most, outlining? Uh, so much, much more time spent outlining than spent writing the script. Um, if you've done, if you've done the, yeah, the yeah. work, if you've done the heavy lifting with the outline and the scene by scene. Um, yeah, the outline yeah. is really tough. Uh, and that might take a week. I mean, outlining a series or an episode. If you've got the series already there and you're just doing the outline in the episode. Three days outlining that. A couple of days doing the scene by scene breakdown and then you can write the whole script in three days yeah. but Whoa. if you haven't done if you haven't done that heavy lifting the horrible mm. work it's the hot that's the turgid turgid mm. turgid work it's mm. we really hate that but the joy when we've got when you've got the scene by scene down and you're just writing the script yeah especially if you know your yeah. characters yeah you can put yeah. the jokes and you're in never then. going you never really stuck because you know what they're yeah. doing in there it's, it's when yeah. you've got a character walking in and you can't think what they're going to say. Well, they shouldn't <laughs> yeah. be there. Mm. What are they doing yeah. there? <laughs> so if ever you go, I don't, I don't want to write this, there might be a reason that isn't your mm. wit. It might just be go back to yeah. the heavy lifting, go back to why you yeah. put them there. So, yeah, we'd spend a lot of time on that. I feel like I've learned something today. Yeah. Oh, that makes me <laughs> nervous. Fabulous. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> I talk so much shit, that does make me nervous. But um... <laughs> No, it's been brilliant. Thank you so much for oh, really giving us Thank you time. very much. And also, I I don't want to sound like, you know, because I'm saying this is what I do, I like to put a little caveat afterwards and go, it, I'm not a sm I, it sounds like I'm being smug just because I'm saying this is what I do. I, uh, you know. But it I'm is, Beth, it is smugness. what you do. That, that's, you know, don't. Mm. Don't be shy about it. You are, you are a successful well, yeah. writer oh, by right, anyone's then. metric. So I'm just aware. I'm also quite pleased with myself. And sometimes that comes over and I get <laughs> shot, shoot myself in the foot with my own smugness. Uh, <laughs> I'll stop talking well, now. Not at all. Oh, well, it's been, it's been gorgeous and lovely. And, uh, and a cool podcast. It's been an honour and a privilege, thanks, Beth. Thanks for doing it. And thanks for asking me on. And to have a lovely rest of your day and in, yeah and get around <laughs> yeah, we should do that we should do that shouldn't we yeah now there's a top tip why didn't you say that earlier <laughs> that's the top tip actually the like, write something <laughs> like the end of strictly come that? dancing whatever they say <laughs> keep dancing or something get writing <laughs> yeah start <laughs> yes. doing something uh, thank you very uh, much thank you very much. to talk to you all and uh, good luck with it all thank you very much you later. cheers Beth. bye take care cheers, Well, thank you, Beth. That was very insightful. I feel like I've actually yeah. learned quite a lot today. I've made notes. That was wonderful. I can't read any of them, but... Do you know what? I think we should... Um, you know, she was talking about log lines. Yeah. I think we should have a go at writing a log line. Yeah. For something. Either for something that we've got an idea for... Not more homework. <laughs> <laughs> There's no holidays here. I know. This yeah. is, we're in the big boys league now. But yeah. that's only well, like okay. two sentences, isn't it? So Dave can't do one of his... Massive, you know, we're going to do a task and Dave comes back with like some three hour epic. Just like, <laughs> He's got to keep sentences. it very, they very short. They can be short. very long sentences. <laughs> Massive sentences. <laughs> Never stop, Dave. Uh, but yeah, two sentences, but very difficult yes. to write a log line or a good log line. So what we're gonna, what we're gonna write it about? I about think we should the, do it about our like work in works in progress or work in progress. Yeah, right. that would okay, be yeah, easier, yeah. wouldn't it? Pro yeah, something that's in progress. Good idea. Yeah, or something that you've got in the back of your mind and you want to start developing. That could also yeah. work. But any something yeah. that is all is pre-existing, something that exists okay. in your brain currently. Yeah. So a log line, stroke, elevator pitch type thing that, yeah. that puts forward succinctly. Yeah. In less than 30 minutes, uh, your <laughs> idea for something to write. Yeah. Yeah. Don't set yourself targets you're not going to be able to achieve there. <laughs> Give yourself something realistic. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. As Beth uh, says as well, it's, a, it's an important thing to do because it, it does kind of set in your mind what you're actually writing about. It's one of those things that if you're writing, it's really good to have like one line just to keep coming back to. And, yes. And, uh, just to refocus. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. All right. All right. Let's do it. Task for next week.
He's so emotional. He's got so emotional about it. He can't yeah. bring a sentence together. Where you, have, where you breathe in, but there's a little bit of spit just dangling. It's, just, it's like you're very minorly waterboard yourself. <laughs> Are you all right, Tommy? No. no oh, sorry, on without me. Hello. Hello. Where's everybody gone?